we already learned that we can model many oscillatory motion by using a mass attached to a spring or a pendulum. When we ignore a drag forces, they become simple harmonic motion and produces either sine or cosine wave, as you can see here. So when we start looking from the equilibrium position, it becomes sine function, where T is the period of oscillation, time it takes to complete one oscillation. When we start uh, from, let's say, maximum displacement position, and then it's going to start from here. So it's going to look like a cosine function, and we can write that as a cosine function. You might have seen when a ball splashes once on a water surface, it produces a ripple. If one were to tap on the water by moving the ball up and down, there will be a ripple from each tap. The result will be a series of ripples moving along water surface. Similarly, a series of disturbance can be produced in a string by oscillating one end of the string. These ripples and disturbances are example of moving waves. When a disturbance passes a certain point of a medium, it sets particle of the medium at that point in oscillation. But the particle are not moving with disturbance. Recall waves generated by oscillating hands of people in a game day. While producing the wave, people are not moving from one seat to another seat. Waves that need medium to travel are called mechanical waves. Sound wave cannot travel in vacuum. On the other hand, light waves can pass through the vacuum space. It reminds me of the sunlight. Such waves are called electromagnetic waves. In physics too, you learn more about the electromagnetic waves. Water waves and earthquake waves are also called surface waves as they are the combination of both longitudinal and transverse wave. Depending on how a disturbance sets the particle in motion, one can divide all waves in two main types, transverse and longitudinal. You can produce both kinds of waves using slinky. So in this case, the motion of the hand is going sideways. On the other hand, wave itself is moving in this direction here. Now, if we were to push one side of the spring, and then what's going to happen? The motion of the spring and the motion of the wave are in the same direction. That means this kind of wave called longitudinal waves. The animation shows a wave where pattern is periodically repeated. Our heartbeat also produces periodic waves. As you can see, the repeated pattern in an EKG. So distance from one crest to next crest is called wavelength. And it can be from trough to trough as well. A wave moves a distance of one wavelength during a period. So that means in one complete oscillation, wave moves one wavelength. And what's the time? The time taken is one period of oscillation. So we can use our kinematic equation, 
for example displacement is velocity times time right so we can replace displacement by the wavelength and the time period time by the period so it gives us an equation wavelength is equal to speed times period so let's use symbol to write it so we use lambda to denote wavelength and uppercase t for the period so this is the mathematical version of this same equation if i rearrange this equation like this by moving this period on the side of the wavelength i get that one over t now i can replace that one over t by frequency lowercase f so this is the wave equation you can find this in your formula sheet speed is frequency times wavelength now we want to write a wave equation this animation shows the vibration of particle as periodic wave passes through them notice how the blue dot at the top is oscillating about the mean position it is not translating from one point to another point when we look at the overall disturbance over there it's periodically rep repeating just like we saw this way periodic wave in last slide so if we were to take snapshot when maximum is at uh, this y-axis we're gonna get something like this so it is a picture taken at a particular time let's say t is equal to zero since we took this snapshot when it was maximum at x is equal to zero position this is a way cosine function the maximum oscillation from the mean position is amplitude but the x has unit of length and usually when we use this cosine and sine function we are writing that in terms of angle in radians so to fix that what we can do is use this idea that when wave shifts through a distance of one wavelength what happens that is equivalent to 2 pi radian or 360 degree that is one complete oscillation so that means it repeats pattern every 2 pi radians so we can use that wavelength to scale this x and that's what we are doing here okay so we are introducing the wavelength of this wave in this equation now if we were to just look at one point just one point a particle just one particle that's oscillating back and forth what happens that oscillation can also be written in the form of cosine just like we look at the oscillating pendulum or oscillating mass attached to the spring it's the same idea so we can write that in terms of cosine and theta can also be written in terms of angular uh, frequency times time so that means uh, now uh, another way to write this omega is 2 pi over period t okay so this and this they look similar the yx equation tells us displacement of each particle from equilibrium position some equilibrium position of the oscillating media over space x all over of this x at one particular time say we can say that time as a zero time 
On the other hand, the yt equation tells us the displacement of one particle over time. Now we can combine these two equations to get an equation that has both position and time information when it is moving along. So that's going to be the traveling wave equation. So we can combine it. So there are two ways of combining it. One, let's subtract one from another one inside the argument. Uh, that can be written in slightly compact form by replacing 2 pi over t with omega and 2 pi over lambda by k. And k has a special name we call wave number. So this equation containing negative sign in a term containing x represents or describes the wave moving to the positive x direction or we can say to the right and we can get left moving equation or the equation that's moving to the negative x direction by adding these two terms in the parenthesis so in another word we can replace this negative sign by positive sign now this describes the wave moving to the left or negative the x direction so remember when we took a snapshot, we said, okay, we start from the maximum position. If we start from equilibrium position, this cosine can be replaced by sine. Now let's plot these three equations. This is time equation. This is position equation. Let's say how y changes with the x. And this is combined equation. This plot here shows this position equation plot. Here I'm using wavelength as 5.1 and I can change this wavelength. And as you can see, uh, the distance between the peak gets smaller and smaller when I reduce the wavelength. So this is just a snapshot at a particular time. And I'm assuming that time is zero. And by the way, the amplitude of this wave can also be changed. So here, larger amplitude, smaller amplitude. Let's keep that at two. Now let's bring a time equation. And by the way, you see it's written GTQX rather than YT and YX because this program doesn't want me to write y for the function okay the y is predetermined so it doesn't want to change that symbol so that's why i'm using zt and qx so this is x function and now let's bring the time function and since both of these are cosine they look similar only difference is since this is plotted in terms of time along the horizontal axis what happens is its wavelength or i should say period is different so i can change that and actually make it overlap so right now both of these are overlapping with each other and you can see that happens when period in this equation is same as wavelength in this equation over here so these are two different plots of course and one in this function it is plotting the x along the horizontal axis but in this equation for example green one is plotting time along the horizontal axis okay so that's what it is doing so let me get rid of 
position equation from here so now you can see time and you can change the period and when you change wavelength see nothing happens here because this equation does not contain the information about wavelength now let me bring traveling wave equation that has information about both time and the position and of course to make a plot i need to replace t and wavelength by a particular number and i can change them as you can see wavelength can be changed and that wavelength information is right here in this equation and similarly i can change period uh, that information is here right now the time lowercase t is set at zero it's there if i change t what happens let's say when time increases what happens this wave is moving to the left why it's moving to the left because there is this positive sign now if i were to change this positive sign to the negative sign let's see what's going to happen so for that i need to come here and modify this equation so replace this positive sign by negative sign and enter so now you can see it has now negative sign now when let's start from zero time so when i increase time it's gonna move to the right okay so this equation has wavelength in it time period in it and one over time period is frequency so that means it has information about both frequency and wavelength and since the product of frequency and wavelength is speed you can find speed of this wave you can calculate the speed of this wave by using on the period information and wavelength information found in this equation